Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. RDNA 4 seems to form the basis of the PS5 Pro's GPU architecture when it comes to ray tracing. And this has been stated by Mark Cerny himself in a recent interview. We're going to be discussing that plus several other very interesting insights into the PS5 Pro after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization option, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also of course sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So the official announcement to the PlayStation 5 Pro was certainly not quite as in-depth as I would have liked. The whole presentation ran around nine minutes and it wasn't exactly packed with technical details. There were a few big insights, one of which is that, of course, the console will utilize PSSR, which is a little bit like NVIDIA's DLSS. It seems to utilize machine learning for upscaling. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. There is a 45% larger GPU and also ray tracing has seen quite a lot of work versus the base model console. Mark said, states that they're looking at an average of two to three x times ray tracing performance over the base model console which is quite interesting it seems to match up what we heard with the leaks from the various documents from the playstation developer portal and it was around two to four x times at least in the developer documents and that matches up with what some of my sources were telling me as well but interestingly, a reporter, Scott Stein, over at CNET managed to actually get his hands on the PS5 Pro and was testing out the machine and got an opportunity to speak to Mark Cerny. According to Cerny, he says that the process of porting over PC games is much easier than it was for the PS4 Pro. He says that the PS5 Pro, much like the PS5 with its ultra-fast SSD, is leading the way for future gaming trends. Mark also states the PS5 Pro uses an advanced, new advanced ray tracing feature set that AMD has created the next step of its roadmap architecture. If you look around, there are no other AMD GPUs that use it yet, and we are very motivated on that development. I'm very happy we did so. The response from developers has been extraordinarily great, end quote. The reporter also got an opportunity to try out various games, of course, that have already seen some work and enhancements for the PS5. 5 Pro and ultimately it seems that the games look much better. Obviously one of the problems with YouTube is you get a lot of compression and it doesn't necessarily do full justice to you know what the games look like in person especially if you're playing it on the correct display. Now getting back to the whole roadmap thing so currently AMD's GPUs for those who don't know RDNA 3 is the latest GPU that you can buy right now from AMD and obviously Cerny is stating that it's beyond that. So AMD are working on RDNA 4 with the rumours being that we're going to see it released early next year. Now I've covered RDNA 4 exhaustively on the channel multiple times at this point so I'm not going to go over it too much here but ultimately it does seem that ray tracing is seeing quite a big improvement over RDNA 3 and this does seem again to be the basis of what uh, Sony are utilizing for the PS5 Pro and it's certainly not the first time that they've bought features from a future architecture if you go back even to the PS4 to PS4 Pro uh, Basically, AMD incorporated features like Rapid Packed Math, which is FP16. So while the um, PS4 Pro's GPU was based on essentially Polaris, so that was found in GPUs like the uh, um, RX 480, that did not incorporate Rapid Packed Math. So basically, Cerny and his team asked AMD to work with them to incorporate the Vega features at FP16. So that basically was half precision operations and it could do lots of cool things on the GPU. And they also did things like color compression and a bunch of other stuff, um, which really did help the PS4 Pro uh, kind of 
it was it was a very interesting set of decisions and sony does do that quite a lot incorporates various custom work into its architectures now at launch there will basically be between 50 and 70 games which see an update for the ps5 pro and obviously how developers choose to utilize the performance of the machine is going to slightly differ but allegedly there are going to be different performance modes and the verge actually were discussing this a little bit in an article which i will also link of course in the video description quote Sources familiar with Sony's plans tell The Verge that Sony is asking developers to create a new PS5 Pro exclusive graphics mode in the game that combines Sony's new PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, PSSR, upscaling to 4K resolutions with a 60fps frame rate and ray tracing effects. Insider Gaming uh, first reported this on some of the enhanced PS5 Pro games last month. And while Sony wants these new modes in games, the PS5 Pro enhanced label will still be available on a variety of other scenarios that does include 30 FPS. Developers have the option to increasing the target resolution for games that run at a fixed resolution on the PS5, or even increasing the target maximum resolution for games that run at a variable resolution on the PS5. This could mean we see PS5 Pro enhanced games that will run at 1080p to 1440p at 30fps on the base model and run at up to 4K on the PS5 Pro at the same frame rate, so 30fps. Fixed resolution could go from 1440p to 4K, that would also qualify as 4K, but developers could also choose to utilize things like better ray tracing effects and so on and so on. So in other words, developers are free to kind of choose their own vision because obviously different games are going to require different things. Now, obviously at the end of the day, these are patches for games that have already been released. So it may be a lot of work for developers to go in and put a ton of optimization work in to get a game running that was say designed around 30 FPS up to 60 FPS. However, with that said, I think pretty much all Sony first party games do have a 60 fps output let me know in the comments if i'm wrong there i think just about all of them uh spider-man for example does uh god of war does and so on and so on i think most do but again if i'm wrong in the comments please let me know which title it is but anyway the point is it's going to be very interesting to see how developers use this especially as we go into the future because ultimately of course you know, in a year's time, developers are going to get a much better understanding on how the hardware works. There's also been a lot of discussion online that I've seen uh, discussing just how the PS5 Pro's GPU is going to stack up, particularly given the fact that while um, the GPU itself is considerably more performant than the base model system, memory bandwidth is not so... Um, it hasn't gone up in kind, so the memory bandwidths are up around 28%. So there are a lot of questions of, are we just going to see the system being bandwidth choked? So before Sony's official announcement of the PS5 Pro, I did actually release, of course, a lot of leaks concerning the console. And also I put out a video of why Unreal Engine 5 was just so performant on the machine. And basically, yes, memory bandwidth is up in terms of GDDR6 memory. It's the same amount of memory 16 gigabytes albeit there is more actually available for games to run on uh, but um, there are also numerous other enhancements so it does seem based on developer documents and also my own information that basically the caches of the gpu l1 for example l2 uh, and so on and so on have basically just been bumped up in terms of their capacity and they're just a lot more efficient and this basically means that a lot more data can be stored and it essentially just reduces the reliance on the uh, memory bus gddr6 at the end of the day it's still quite early at the moment we're still dealing with a lot of leaks and unfortunately while this interview that we saw from cnet is quite interesting in that it gives us some small insight into the rdna4 side of things we still don't have exactly all of the information um regarding the machine so hopefully we get more in fact clock frequency was just not even mentioned whatsoever regarding the cpu as well as the gpu and i'm gonna say for you guys right now to take this with a huge pinch of salt um but i did receive an email and it is anonymous i've never heard from this source before so do take with what I'm about to say with a massive pinch of salt. But this person essentially is telling me that uh, one of the reasons is Sony have not settled on the clock frequency yet, and it may be increased for final production machines. Now, this has not... 
Um, it, this is not without precedent. In fact, if you go back to the Xbox One announcement, you may recall that the CPU was originally going to run at 1600 megahertz and the GPU at 800. And then before the machines were launched, Microsoft, I think they increased the CPU speed first to 1750, then the GPU speed to 853, but it might have been the reverse. They may have done GPU first, then CPU. So obviously this can happen. I also ran this by a couple of other sources. One person told me that this is not something they've personally heard, so they are extremely skeptical. I won't share the, a photo of the email just, just in case because I don't want someone's writing style to be traceable because sometimes, you know, that can happen. But um, ultimately speaking, they, they are very skeptical with how the email is worded, so that also puts a lot of pause. And I wasn't even going to report this. However, another person I spoke with and she told me that the clock frequency they've heard can go up to two, sorry, 4.1. I'm going to say that again. So the clock frequency of the CPU can go up to 4.1 gigahertz. I ran this by yet another source and they've basically said that they've not heard this. So for now, I would put that as like, this is not true. And I would take those figures with just absolutely no like confidence. The only reason I'm reporting it is just you can kind of fire that it. it's like that would be interesting so that's the only reason i'm reporting this it would be cool if it's true again until sony officially confirms the clock speeds because remember the only reason we have clocks um at all is because of the developer documents and again those developer documents they could have just been old information and because we are not privy to the updated information let alone the configurations of the retail machines is it true? Honestly, I don't know. Um, I would love a higher clock frequency, but ultimately, they would only see like you know a 250 250-ish uh, megahertz increase anyway over the reported figures for the CPU at best. So it's still not exactly a huge increase. I've heard absolutely nothing on the GPU running faster, but again. We're dealing with a lot of uh, conflicting information here. So I'm reporting this as is. I personally don't necessarily believe it right now. I still think the 3.85 gigahertz for the highest end clock frequency is correct, but I find it interesting. It's going to be very intriguing also to see how games like GTA 6 are going to run on the PS5 Pro. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of debate whether we're going to see 60 FPS titles or not. Um, sorry, uh, GTA, GTA 6 running at 60 FPS or not. I have heard that Sony are definitely going to push, be pushing a GTA 6 heavily for a marketing deal with um, the PS5 Pro. But I think we could all kind of understand that that was going to happen anyway. Um, it's going to be very interesting also to see how Sony ends up um, selling this machine in terms of the quantities. Uh, obviously, at the end of the day, the console is still very expensive at 700 bucks. However, I also think that while it is very expensive, and I definitely think it's more expensive than perhaps many of us predicted, this is a system that's ultimately going to appeal to those who just want the best possible gaming experience on a Sony system. And there are a lot of folks who will say, well, you know, you're getting kind of close to a PC build. And that's very true. Like, look, I'm a PC gaming whore. I'm the first to admit I prefer gaming on PC. But I also have many friends and they can afford to buy a high-end PC rig. But they just choose not to. They just prefer the PlayStation ecosystem. And that's an absolutely fine and valid choice. So I think, you know, when you're kind of like saying, well, you could build a PC. Well, that's true. You could, you know, get like a really good system for like a thousand bucks or eleven hundred bucks or twelve hundred bucks. And we can argue all day long, especially when the next generation of cards come out next year. Um, RDNA 4 is allegedly going to be fairly cheap although personally just because of what's happening in the market right now i'll believe that when i see it so in regards to the ps5 pro's price i've just want to mention this real quick because i find the discussion around this really interesting um because it is certainly not a cheap system i think we could all agree that it is possibly like a hundred bucks more expensive than what many of us predicted it would be even though there is a two terabyte drive with it which is definitely nice 
I think for a lot of folks, they are getting upset that there is no uh, Blu-ray drive, and I do think that's kind of a kick in the balls, but it is what it is. One particular discourse I don't necessarily like is when people say, well, you could buy a, P a PC for that kind of cash. First of all, I, I think 700 for a PC that can rival a PS5 Pro, you could do it, especially if you've got a decent-ish base system. For example, if you have like an AM4 board and you were to replace it, assuming the memory you have doesn't suck and you've got a decent P uh, PSU and so on and so on, you could buy something like a 5800X3D and you could put in an RTX 4070 or something like that and it would be reasonably comparable, pretty comparable to a PS5. On the other hand, if you don't have that, so for example, you're a laptop gamer, it becomes very much a tall order to be able to build a system that could kind of compare to a PS5 Pro. And you could buy something like a 3700X, which is pretty much the same CPU that's inside the PS5 Pro, albeit with some small changes here or there. But I would argue that you're just doing yourself a disservice. So again, you would want to pick up a cheap AM4 board or an AM5 board or Intel or what have you. And again, you wouldn't want to scrimp and save on things like a power supply anyway. So you're probably going to be getting like the $1,100 mark plus at this point, um, maybe $1,200. Again, depending on exactly how lucky you get. I think next year it's going to be a bit easier because RDNA 4 is going to release. <laughs> Although I'll believe whether that's cheap when I see it. Um, but here's the thing, guys. Like, I am a PC gamer primarily. I just enjoy it. I do really like consoles. However, for me, the prime console gaming time for me was like 16 and 32 bit ps2 era as well just because i just loved being able to take a game and put it into the system i think there was just something beautiful about having a you know a sega genesis game plonk off you go no loading no patches nothing just bang it's done um but again for a lot of folks it's not really about you know, oh, the console is 700 therefore I could get a PC for 1100 or 1200 It's just the fact that they prefer the PlayStation. And I have friends who have more than enough money to buy, like, a PC that's got, like, a, I don't know, like, a 4080 or 4090 or what have you, but they just want to play the PlayStation. Now, would they get higher-end graphics on a 4090? Yes. Do they care? No. <laughs> It's that simple. Um, so I'll leave it to you in the comments. You can, you know, discuss whether you think it's a good deal or not. Again, I think it's expensive um, for a console, but tech at the moment is just absolutely insane. And I don't think the next generation of consoles, just to be clear, I mean the PS6 and whatever the next Xbox is going to be called, I don't think they're going to be cheap. I think tech is just going to become more and more expensive, unfortunately, which is a shame, but... It's how things are at the moment. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on that. With that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.